Continuing coverage from the 2010 ONS conference in San Diego, talking now with Paula Anastasia, clinical nurse specialist from Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. Thanks for stopping by and bringing your chipper personality to us. <laughs> so we're talking about ovarian cancer and, and some hot topics. Um, how common is recurrence and what new treatment options are there available? In ovarian cancer, unfortunately, the majority of patients are diagnosed in the late stage, and because of that, there is a high incidence of recurrence. About 75 to 80 percent of our patients with stage 3 and 4 ovarian cancer will recur. The good news is there are a lot of treatment options out there now for our patients, so we are extending survival over the last 25 years since I've been an oncology nurse. So some of the new agents out there, we have new indications for a combination carboplatin and liposomal doxorubicin. And there are a lot of exciting new molecular and targeted therapies coming down the pike that are showing efficacy and response rates that will improve survival. Paula, how do you address clinical trials in the patient setting? Well, clinical trials are very important. So whenever a patient is either newly diagnosed or in a recurrent setting, if our institution has a clinical trial available, then we will offer them the standard of care or the clinical trial that is available. And it's very important that patients enroll in clinical trials, number one, because that's how we define answers as to what is therapeutic, and unfortunately, sometimes what is not therapeutic. And I think back in the late 80s and the early 90s when we did the studies with Taxol, of, of, in ovarian cancer and it got approval in 92. Well, prior to that time, the life expectancy was only about two years. So now we've come so much further because of these courageous and altruistic women who entered into these clinical trials. So moving forward, we still need more answers. I mean, we, we have not had a home run with ovarian cancer. We are providing longevity, as I mentioned, and length of life, but we still haven't found the treatment that is going to cure these patients. So we like to be objective and give patients the options and encourage people to do uh, clinical trials. The problem with clinical trials, I think, is sometimes in our education because oftentimes they'll be offered a standard of care plus a new agent and that new agent is what we call blinded. So they'll be offered the clinical trial which will be with standard of care but the patient won't know whether or not they're getting their experimental treatment versus for sure they'll get their experimental treatment or standard of care. But somehow, in my translation that I've just confused you with, patients are only hearing that they're going to get a placebo. And so sometimes we need to do a better job of reminding patients that this is how we're going to get answers. The new treatment for PARP inhibitors for women with BRCA mutations and breast or ovarian cancer has been getting a great deal of press. What are your thoughts? PARP uh, stands for poly ADP ripose polymerase. And what it is, is it's an enzyme that helps repair DNA damaged cells. Okay, so we all have PARP pathway in our bodies. A PARP inhibitor then is a drug and it can be given either orally or IV depending on the company that makes it. It's in clinical trials and the PARP inhibitor is a mechanism to block the pathway. So as a, uh, the DNA strand is damaged due to uh, what caused the cancer, then our bodies produce or upregulate a PARP pathway to correct that DNA. Well, that DNA will then continue to make the cancer cell. So we need to block it with a drug that is called a PARP inhibitor. So there are different, there are different uh, companies out there, AstraZeneca, Bipar, Abbott. They are, uh, have clinical trials where they have developed these PARP inhibitors. So the clinical trials are just showing fabulous responses to these ladies that have mutations or deficits in the BRCA1 and 2 pathway. And that is, uh, evidence has shown that in both ovarian and breast cancer populations. Paula, thanks for stopping by and spending a few minutes with us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me here today. Appreciate it. Paula Anastasia from Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles.